Interpreting asymptotes, sometimes we have to find the asymptote first, sometimes it's given to us. In this case, the asymptote is given to us as y equals 400, but let's just see really quickly how we could find that on our own. We have a degree 1 polynomial in the numerator, we have a degree 1 polynomial in the denominator, and so I would take those leading terms, 20t over 0.05t, the t's drop out, and I end up with just the calculation 20 divided by 0.05, which I could see from using a calculator or just doing some decimal arithmetic real quick, is equal to 400. So that y equals 400 is my horizontal asymptote. And I can draw that line in here on my graph. It's right about up here at the top, it looks like. So in order to interpret this asymptote, I need to think about the meaning of both the input and output variable and describe what's happening in the graph in a way that reflects that meaning. So I will look at this and say, okay, first of all, the output variable is deer population. Uh, in this case, the input variable t is not explicitly stated, but it is time in years. This population is a function of time. Okay, so what we see is that as time passes, just looking at the graph and analyzing all of it, as time passes, this population is increasing. The deer are doing what they do best. They're eating, they're making more deer, right? So the population is increasing, but it's not just gonna grow without bound forever. So this is a state game park. There's all sorts of natural forces at work here. There's limited food, limited space. It's a game park, so there's also hunters, right? So there are a lot of natural limitations to this population. And what we see is that the maximum sustainable population appears to be about 400 deer. And that as time increases, the population approaches that number 400. So there's a few different ways that we could state this. I'm gonna try just a few of those. So one interpretation would be just a straightforward description of what's happening in this graph. As time passes, right, more and more time passes, the deer population approaches 400 deer. So that's one possible interpretation. Another interpretation that gets a little bit more into why we would have a horizontal asymptote here would be to look at, uh, you know, why, why is this occurring? Maybe just because of our limited resources, limited space, limited food, etc., we have a maximum sustainable population of deer. When we get much below that, we'll find that there's not a lot of competition for food, and so the deer population will tend to increase. If we get a little bit above that, then we find that there is a lot of competition for food. Maybe some deer are malnourished and they're not thriving, they're not surviving, they're not creating more offspring, and so the population tends to decrease again to approach this 400. So that 400 seems to be a sustainable number if it's the horizontal asymptote and the value that the function approaches as time increases. Vertical asymptotes tend to be a little bit more difficult to interpret than horizontal asymptotes. Let's take a look at this cost-benefit model, where the input variable in this case is the percent of smokestack pollutants that can be removed by cleaning, and the output variable is the cost of removing that percent. So first of all, we are told that this has a vertical asymptote at p equals 100, but we can verify that. Just looking at this denominator, we can see there are no common factors, so 100 minus p we would set equal to zero in order to find that vertical asymptote. So we can also draw it on our graph. It looks like this right here is the vertical asymptote that that 
graph is approaching as we read it from left to right. So what this means is that as we try to approach 100% in P, right, we'll just sort of write out the, um, the, the less enlightened version of this interpretation first and then think about what it's telling us. As P approaches 100%, it looks like the cost increases without bound. It's not enough to just say the cost increases. The cost could increase as we pro approach 100%, but still be approaching a number, right? You might still be able to say, well, we can clean up 100% and it'll cost us $5 trillion or something, but that's not the case here. It increases without bound which tells us that it's not possible to clean up 100%, right, from this coal plant. Not possible to clean up 100%, but as we try to get closer and closer, the cost increases without bound, right? So we can put all of that in our interpretation. It is not possible to clean 100% of the pollutants, and in the interest of time, I just filled this in in advance, it's not possible to clean 100% of the pollutants, and as the percent we try to clean approaches 100%, our cost increases without bound. So we have to just decide at what point are we going to stop and say that it's enough or that it's all we can afford, right? We know we're not going to get 100%.